Natutuwa mga kids. Kalau sharing. Our undeniable leader, Michael, who steered the ship um, as few others could have had through a lot of challenges and yeah, some more challenges. <laughs> and uh, done an amazing job in making sure this amazing, exciting place that we started to think about just over a year ago will come into fruition. So thank you, Mike. Last but not least, would be a big thank you to our Umanata family, the staff, and the incredible team that we have around you guys tonight. It will be always the heartbeat and the soul of this place, and this will never change. So, thank you, team, and family is family. We really appreciate you all coming and joining us again. And I'll it to Alex now to tell you a bit more about Umanota and what it means to us and hopefully for you in the future. Thank you so much. Hi everyone. Uh, hello again to someone I've quickly uh, chatted with and, and met a little bit. Um, just to maybe reframe and put uh, the concept into context, Umanota is a Brazilian Japanese concept originating from Sao Paulo. And what we're showcasing is the Japanese subculture in Brazil. It's the largest outside Japan. And uh, the immigration started early 1900s. So it's to show that we're not trying to invent anything. So we try to stay away from the word fusion as much as possible because we're really showcasing uh, the cuisine that is from Sao Paulo that is now known as uh, Brazilian cuisine in, in Sao Paulo in the neighborhood called Liberdade, uh, which is where it was called the Japan town back in the day. Um, so it, it's very important to understand that because we're, it, it makes it very authentic and very, very deeply rooted, uh, which we believe sets us apart to other similar concepts, which I think I touched on a little bit on, on a couple of tables. Um, and uh, we're extremely grateful, extremely excited to be here. Uh, I think if you would have told us uh, two and a half years ago in the middle of COVID that we would open such a beautiful space uh, with our amazing partners in the Shangri-La in Manila, I would have not believed anyone. So um, we're, we're, we're very excited. Uh, back when Michael, we met in last February, so we've been working on this for a year almost. Uh, lots of uh, blood, sweat and tears, to say the least. Um, and he approached us and said, oh, we're looking at this space in Manila, would you be interested? And uh, absolutely no disrespect, I was like, what the hell am I gonna do in Manila? And then the next weekend I came here and I told myself, what the hell am I doing in Hong Kong? So um, I rediscovered you know, a city that uh, is up and coming, which we believe is probably the city of the future within Asia. And I'm not just saying that to, to please the, the room. We really do believe in it. And I, and I hope this uh, kind of proves uh, that uh, puts a little bit of backing behind it. Um, tremendous opportunities. Uh, the market is, is absolutely amazing. The people are absolutely amazing. They love a good party. That's a big similarity with uh, Brazilians in general. Um, so, and, and uh, of course being in Shangri-La is, is a big, big plus and, and we can be more thankful to, to Shangri-La in general. Um, so yeah, I'm extremely excited with what's to come, uh, not just a restaurant, so really a space where life is going to happen uh, and you'll have a little bit of games with the surprise in, in, in a minute. Um, and we really want to try and do something a little bit different in Manila and hopefully uh, you'll be able to see, taste and, and hear what the difference is. So thank you all so much for being here. Thanks for taking the time. We hope you're enjoying your food and I'll pass it on to Michael. Uh, okay, um, I have a habit for taking a bit too much time on the microphone, um, but I'm told by Spani that the more information the better tonight. So I'll start with a story of sort of how this came about. Um, so as Alex mentioned, it was actually a year ago. Uh, Amir and I, we have conversations saying, ah, man, uh, we have got to open a place in Manila. We've got to open a restaurant, a bar, the burger joint at the start. <laughs> we were like, we need, we need, we need to open a burger place. So we had a hundred different ideas, um, really trying to figure out uh, what to do. And I don't think this is by chance. Um, I think it matches, and, and you guys will know, uh, as the press, more than us, really that Filipino uh, F&B and hospitality is on the rise around the world. 
not just the Netherlands, but we're hearing stories of obviously the Michelin star uh, concepts sort of thing in America, the diaspora around the world, really putting Filipino cuisine on the map. And I think for as long as I can remember, Philippines has always been the forgotten little brother of Southeast Asia when everyone talks about Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia, all these wonderful cuisines. So why, why is Philippines not on the map? And, you know, I think uh, I just want to take a moment to everyone in the FNB scene, everyone in the hospitality scene, try to really raise the standard and really put Manila on the map. Um, which leads me on to my next point, which is the story of how we met. Uh, I was actually looking for a concept. Uh, Alec, uh, Amir and I were talking about doing something. And I had visited maybe three or four restaurants uh, in Hong Kong couple of Michelin star places, speaking some really, really, really impressive food groups, but didn't really feel a click. I didn't feel a match with anyone. And so there I was, and I got uh, recommended uh, to go eat at this uh, wonderful Mediterranean establishment called Bedu. Bedu, it's a fantastic Mediterranean restaurant. Just so happens to be part of their food group as well. And there I saw a very kind um, elderly gentleman cutting vegetables in the front of the kitchen. I said, what is what is this poor man doing cutting vegetables at the front of this amazing restaurant? Like, where, where's the owners? And as I tend to do, I had a few drinks, and when I had a, when I had a few glasses of wine, I started to think I could speak French, and I started speaking French to this guy, and he was able to understand me, and he told me actually, oh, this restaurant is owned by my son and my daughter. This is Laura, by the way. Um, I didn't think Laura got introduced, but it's an application. Um, and I don't know where Alex and Laura were, but they left their poor father working and running the store by himself. Uh, but he said, speak to my son. Speak to my son. He has a fantastic concept that sounds like it would really fit in Manila. And he was familiar with the Shangri-La, having been their um, executive vice president uh, previously at the Shangri-La group. And I met with Alex, and this is the part I can skip through because I can really say it was instant. There was a click in terms of ambition, in terms of what we wanted to do. It was just a case of convincing him that Manila was the, the right place. They were open in Hong Kong, they were open in Paris, and it was just a case of saying, hey, come look at the Philippines. I think it was the same night or a few days later, I actually booked your ticket. So I didn't give him a choice. So I booked his ticket to, to Manila, um, and he flew over, and in his own words, uh, he was kind of flying over thinking, what the hell am I going to do in Manila? And he flew back to Hong Kong saying, what the hell are we doing in Hong Kong? <laughs> so that always uh, brings a smile to my face, and, and, and obviously when we got to meet Amir, I think the chemistry between the three of us uh, was almost instant. And I can truly say, uh, having worked with Alex side by side, shoulder to shoulder for the last year, I have never gained so much respect for someone in such a quick time. Um, it's not a coincidence the success they've had in two very challenging markets, Hong Kong and Paris. Um, and Laura, sorry, Alex and Laura. <laughs> um, it's not a coincidence, uh, the success they've had. Uh, the ambition, the drive, um, it's not just the creativity, but the hard work and the dedication behind it all is something I really actually look up to uh, when I look at Alex. Um, so I'm incredibly grateful to you, Alex. I'm incredibly grateful to you, Laura. My brother, my best friend, Amir, this is our first business together. Uh, so I'm very excited for the future in that sense. Um, I'm grateful to Fabienne, the mother of Alex, there we are, hello, <laughs> um, and Laura, for birthing not just two fantastic people in hospitality, two wonderful f and minds, but two amazing, amazing human beings. And I'm so, so happy you're in our lives. I'm so, so happy on behalf of Manila. I'm Filipino, by the way, so I can speak on behalf of the Philippines. Um, I do have a passport, if you want to see, to show you guys. <laughs> but don't, don't test my technology, please. <laughs> But um, I do want to say thank you, Alex, Laura, from the bottom of my heart. Um, not only for trusting myself and Amir with your concepts, but believing in Manila, believing in the future of the Philippines, and believing in the possibilities of what can be done here. And I think together, I think Manila deserves to keep growing, to be getting better and better, to be raising the standard. And again, members of the media, members of the press, I thank you guys as much as us for being part of that wave. I thank everyone else in FNB. I honor all the people who came before us. We're in this together. And I think with Umanata, we're going to be putting Manila on the map in the coming years. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. All right.
If I may, raise a glass. Thank you guys so much for coming tonight. Um, cheers to you guys. Cheers to you guys. Cheers to Umanata. I think the last thing to do is let's celebrate, guys. Thank you so much. Cheers.